Good evening and welcome to our podcast tonight. It's a Saturday, November the 9th, 2013. We are freedom from covert harassment and surveillance. We're here on Saturdays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time to educate and assist those who are targets of organized stalking, remote electronic assaults, and more, and to let you know that you are not alone and that there are many thousands and millions of us nationwide and worldwide working together for our freedom. Views expressed during our podcast are those of our callers and not necessarily those of FFCHS. I'm Derek Robinson, the moderator. Okay, our guest tonight is Dwight Mangum, who is an electronics engineer, an industrial electronics engineer, a mechanical engineer, a robotics engineer, and more. And with all these skills and knowledge, he has managed to keep his targeting at bay for the past three years. And hopefully this evening, some of you will also learn to do likewise. And I'm hoping that we will also be joined by some of his tech expert friends around the community. So hopefully we can make some progress in the area of shielding, and protection from electromagnetic attack and other topics of interest. He has tremendous knowledge and skill in the areas of electronics and mechanics, and I'm sure he will make great contributions for the benefit of our targeted community. So at this time, I'd like to welcome to our podcast, Dwight Mangum. Uh, Yes, Derek, I'm here. All right. um, Okay, well... Welcome to our podcast, Dwight, and thanks for uh, being here with us tonight. Um, I'd uh, just like to start off. Welcome. I would just like to start with uh, perhaps a little background, um, if you wouldn't mind, if you could share a little bit of your educational background with us before we begin. Okay, uh, I, started, uh, I started out of high school as a uh, bike fitter's apprentice with Daniel's Construction Company and worked at Hertz Fibers in Spartanburg till I was 20 years old. And then I joined the United States Navy where I became a fire control technician and then changed uh, rates as a gunner's mate. Uh, I served in uh, the U.S. Navy in Pearl Harbor for three years. And then I moved into NATO in uh, Europe for about a year and a half uh, with an extended cruise in Europe working with NATO. Uh, During this time, I I had studies at uh, Orange County College on board ship in journalism. Uh, After I got out of the Navy, I went into electrical. I uh, attended Isothermal Community College for my electronics engineering degree. I worked as maintenance supervisor, maintenance engineer, and maintenance manager at several different places, and then was uh, asked to come to BMW Manufacturing Corporation or company in uh, Greer, South Carolina, when it was first built. I went there as a... uh, Uh, ESA and advanced up to a project engineer during that time they sent me to school to get my mechanical degree uh, mechanical degree my robotics degree uh, I got certificates in heating and air and RFID and uh, hydraulics and pneumatics And I earned uh, probably uh, eight other certifications uh, during my first six years at BMW. I've been with BMW for, uh, this is my 19th year. Uh, I went to a Siemens RFID course in 2007 after I was first attacked. And in this course, they had the Siemens RFID 6000 unit up and running in the course. 
And as I placed my hand between the antennas, which were probably uh, 12 to 14 feet apart, the antennas were probably 18 inches by 18 inch square green antennas. As I placed my hand between them, the green light on the pickup module flashed. And as I placed my left hand between the antennas, the green light on the pickup module flashed. The instructor immediately said, you have a medical implant, don't you? And this shocked me so much. I knew something was wrong because in 2006, I was abducted by this person taken to their home, given a drink at 9.30 p.m., woke up at 1.30 p.m. the next day with the sun shining through the window and knew then that something was very, very wrong. They woke me up as if I'd been in an operation, shaking me, or this person did, and kneeing me in the hip. I immediately got up. I was noticed I was laying face up on the edge of, of the bed. I got up and ran to the bathroom and looked at my hip because she frogged it so hard, uh, kneeing me. And there was a large injection mark on my right hip. I was scared to death. I gathered my stuff and went straight home. Went to the bathroom undressed to take a shower and stood before the mirror and inspected my body and hands, arms, legs. I had uh, about a quarter inch cut between my index finger and the first joint of my thumb. I had a large mosquito bite between my ring finger and middle finger. It felt like surgical glue behind in the crease of my ears like surgical super glue. I had a large bump on my right scapula, a large knot on the left top of my head, uh, blood veins, uh, looked like blood running through the skin on the insides of my upper calves, both of them, and a knot on my left hip. Uh, I began recording these people before I was abducted. I began recording all their phone calls as I found them to be harassing. I continued recording my phone calls, and I purchased many audio forensics programs I probably spent around $4,000, $5,000 on different audio forensic programs until I found one that was probably the cheapest. It is called uh, Acoustica Premium from Acon Digital. That's A-C-O-N. They're out of Germany. It has a plug-in or a dynamic link library for wideband noise reduction. And, of course, it has the other plug-ins also for de-clicking, de-popping, de-crackling, everything you would need in a sound program to clean and uh, make unaudible sounds audible. Okay, I began just recording phone calls, and I noticed in every phone call, it was kind of funny when these perpetrators would call me, and I put it on, the way I worked it is I cut the recorder on, then I answered the phone as I'm recording. So when I played it back, I found it shocking to hear that I was hearing my perps before I ever answered the phone. So my first initial thought was, someone is tapping my telephones. I found this to be on my home phones, my cell phone, and eventually my work phone. I complained at BMW that someone was uh, tapping my work phone, and our phone supplier said there is no way possible. 
I called the county law and AT&T to my home. At the time, I was living in Forest City, North Carolina, which is just above Spartanburg, South Carolina. And it's about 45 minutes to BMW, so it wasn't such a bad drive. But uh, AT&T came over, checked my lines out, and said they could find no hard device on my lines. However, it was not improbable that someone was tapping my lines using newer technologies. Okay, I began running my own test. I went through the house and unplugged each phone one at a time and recorded in silence. By this time, the tinnitus in my ear had already grown. As I recorded in silence, I took it back to my audio forensics program, and I would still hear them. So I'd unplug another phone. And I did this until I said, well, let me unplug this last phone. I had three phones in my, my home. I went to unplug it. And to my amazement, it was already unplugged. I began testing outside in private of my vehicle, in stores, in silence anywhere I went. I was picking up these people. I finally ran a test with my ICD digital recorder, which shows the volume equalizer bars for stereo microphones, high condenser pickups, and I set it on the table, and I could see a little jump as if someone was talking. However, when I took my fingers and pressed against the microphones and held it down, and I have a video of this, I saw the equalizer bars jumping big time. Now, I became so good at audio forensics, not only could I clean and hear this tinnitus that is in our ears, I could see it visually, the speech. I could tell when a sentence started, when a sentence ended, when a different person spoke. I know who my perpetrators are, and I hope to soon take them to court with court actions. Now, as I see it, we need to know, or you need to know, who your perpetrators are. Now, I have come to the conclusion that these perpetrators are government-sponsored subcontractors, that these people lied and defrauded against me, and I won't go into the reason why, but the thing is, you have to protect yourself. Uh, you people that think you're only being physically boots on the ground stalked, you're being made to think that. There are people being used to make you think they're boots on the ground, and there are boots on the ground. There are very little or very few boots on the ground, though. Uh, I noticed there was a recent Department of Homeland Security uh request on the internet for actors for the San Diego area that had once held a secret clearance uh, for what they were going to use these people for is unknown, but they were asking for people watchers. As time went on, I discovered that I could record them anytime in silence. I have approximately seven years' worth of recordings on probably 20 portable hard drives from one terabyte to two terabyte each. I record files daily in silence. I come back and clean them and was able to learn from these files. I have some videos on YouTube which some people can't hear these these files. And as uh, my good friend Dr. Robert Duncan says on page 37 in The Matrix Deciphered, the target will hear the first syllables of every word spoken. However, the non-targeted individual will only concentrate on the white noise in the background. 
Now, I came to the conclusion that with my test with my recorder and my audio forensics, that this is bone conduction. Bone conduction is uh, they could replace one of your teeth in your mouth with a uh, sound, audible vibration that would be transferred by bone conduction to the ear to give you the B2K. They can also use these uh, microwave V2K, place something in your home. However, I still believe that there needs to be an implant or something to give you the, the ability to hear the voice. When I first got attacked, they had it turned up too loud, and I could sit in silence and just about hear them. I could plug my earphones into my high-condenser microphone ICD record, stereo ICD recorder, and I could hear them. The first time I did this, I heard a man say, I bet I can make him S-H-I-T. And the minute he said that, I had to jump up and run. And they drained every bit of the water out of me. For three years, they tortured me with this uh, device until I finally, and uh, they tortured me with uh, sharp pains to the temples. But these gut punches, one time they hit me so hard with it, I ran to the bathroom, sat down on the toilet, and picked up the plastic garbage can and was spewing from both ends at jet propulsion speed. And it was uh, probably 10 to 15 seconds long. They drained every bit of the water out of me, and I dove over into my bathtub and cut my shower on and emerged myself in water and found out that I could get away from them this way. My bathtub, by the way, is cast iron with ceramic coating. Dr. Robert Duncan stated that one of the best protections you can have for uh, L frequencies and very low frequencies, uh, even some microwave frequencies, is ceramic. So the ceramic tile in your bathroom is very safe if you are under a harsh attack. If your bathroom's only half tiled, sit in the floor. I learned to put the Mylar over my windows. I have Mylar emergency blankets, which you can buy at Walmart for $2 a piece, over my windows on the inside, uh, just in my bedroom and my uh, master bedroom bathroom I had to sleep for three years I could not sleep on a bed uh, well three and a half years if I tried to sleep on a bed I felt like I was being cooked on a microwave in a microwave oven I measured a frequency and a potential on the metal springs and framing of my bed mattress. I once ran a test for a potential across my body from hand, left hand to right toe, almost six volts DC. Everything I touched in the beginning of my attack that was metal, I would get a very large static charge. I began to realize that most of these attacks were static, developed, directed energy. I then, uh, let's see, four years ago, I decided I was running interference devices. Uh, my first, the first person to ever help me, by the way, in 2007 was John Mecca. Out of New York, he runs a site called us-government-torture.com. You can find a lot of information on his site, but he sent me a schematic for an interference motor. It is a one and a half volt motor you can buy at Radio Shack. I bought a battery holder for a uh, one AA battery, one and a half volt. 
you run the positive to one side of the motor. The negative, you run a wire around the back of your neck and back down to the motor. On the wire at the back of your neck, you skin it so it's bare wire. You're on the negative side of the motor. Now, the theory was that the brushes in the motor create a harmonics or a frequency that interfered with your attacks. And this worked great. Uh, I then met Michael Fitzhugh Bell. Well, first of all, I uh, discovered Roger Tulsis on the Internet. I traveled to Pocatello, Idaho in 2009 and was under a 24-hour scan for five days, four frequency uh, being targeted at me. And you can go to my site, Damon Sound Channel. That's Damon Sound, one word, channel on YouTube. And uh, let's see, I'll, I'll, I'll post this in the link. Let me see what video it was. Uh, I think it was 0240. Let me make sure this is the right one. Uh, nope. Uh, that's just the video. Let's see, is it 41? Yes. Okay, I will post this uh, video in the chat link. Uh, this is my scan with a spectrum analyzer by Roger Tulsis. And what he found was a bandwidth from about 182, I think he says, gigahertz to 1.98 gigahertz. Uh, aimed at me constantly. Uh, it was a frequency that was not local to the area which he had previously scanned. And it was picked up strongest at my direct body. In other words, uh, the antenna was placed on my chest as I rested. And this signal was, was picked up there. Um, you can see that in the link that I posted. He promised me he would take a look further and try to figure out what this, uh, where this uh, was coming from, but he was unable to do so. Later, he introduced me to Michael Fitzhugh Bell, a lady out of New York, and uh, we got together on the phone. It turned out Michael Fitzhugh Bell was under attack and had to move in with his parents in Tryon, which was only about 30 miles from me. So we met one day and discussed our targeting at a uh, local pizzeria or pizza parlor. He was under the impression that it was all physical, stalking, that every person that passed his path, that looked at him, or drove by his home was a harasser. We were introduced to a fellow targeted individual in Madrid, Spain. His name was Enrique. He knew a doctor there in Spain that knew about these attacks of electronic harassment. And Michael Fitzhugh Bell went to him first. Uh, there at the doctor's office, he ran an ultrasound. He found small white fibers that uh, I thought was carbon nanotubes in his eyebrows, one in his belly button, above his, uh, right above his belly button. And uh, as the doctor read them, he said, yes, here's one. It's talking back to my machine now. I found this to be amazing, so the next month I traveled to Madrid. I saw the same doctor. Enrique set up all the appointments. The doctor examined me for scars, and he said, yes, I think you are an electronic targeted individual. 
He sent me to St. Raphael's Hospital in Madrid to have an MRI scan. I had that done, and the next day I was to go back for the results. Instead, they took me in Enrique into a large conference room, laid the MRIs out, even printed out some of them on paper with comparisons of normal MRIs and my MRIs. They noted the remarkable items and told me, we do not know you. We don't know if you're a government spy, if you're a criminal, or what. But we have come to the conclusion, and they looked at Enrique and said, we will not see any more targeted individuals, and we will not give any reports, because we fear this is a government conspiracy, and it would involve our hospital and our medical uh, establishment. So I'll let Michael Fitzhugh Bell, by the way, he is the author of the book, The Invisible Crime. Uh, you can purchase that book at uh, any bookstore, Barnes & Noble, Amazon. You can order it. Uh, you can get it, I uh, think, electronically on Nook. Okay, uh, first of all, Michael Fitzhugh Bell visited probably 36 doctors with this evidence who refused to get involved or refused to operate and remove some of these devices. They just about treated him like he was mentally ill immediately or tried to, however, he said, how can I be mentally ill when I have exact evidence before you? However, it came to uh, our notice that every medical profession was told that if someone came in complaining of electronic harassment or being chipped, they were to be sent to mental, straight to mental, no questions asked. And it came out to us that this was a government notice to all medical facilities. Later on, Michael Fitzhugh Bell find, found a uh, oral surgeon who did remove one of the chips from his gum. He was able to take pictures of it. However, it went to biopsy and never returned. It disappeared. Hey, uh, let me just ask you a question. Uh, if you could pause for yes. a second here. Um, uh, you, you were saying that this, this message went out from this hospital to, like, all hospitals that that people complaining with electromagnetics or microchip or something are to be. What year was this? This was uh, probably 2008 that I heard first heard it. However, uh, after making my initial complaint that I thought my work phone was tapped, I was sent to a uh, an eight hour a day outpatient treatment where they evaluated and found that I, there was nothing mentally wrong with me. However, I was delusional about hearing people on on my phone. So, in other words, I was hearing them, but when I tried to play them back for other people, now I'm I'm not. I'm not a trained audio forensics. This is something I had to learn on my own. Uh, but I cannot record and play back as good as I can when I clean it. And to my surprise, there are some things that some people can't hear that I can. And I uh, blame this on the devices they found behind my ears in my MRI. They found a device behind each ear poking into my ear canal. Now, if you'd like to see these, they're on the, uh, I, I was a moderator for a while for OSI call talk show. And I still get on there every now and then. And in the OSI.lafora forum, 
That's the uh, osinformers.lafora.com forum under uh, one of the columns there. You can view my M MRIs. I have them on that site. They may, may be under uh, electronic devices. I'd have to go to that site real quick to uh, look for it. But also on my Damon Sound channel, you can uh, see some of my audio forensic recordings. And if you go to the one dated 32113 New Forensics, and you go to about 14, uh, excuse me, 1357, into that recording, 1357 exactly, you can hear a girl say, Jason, you got any paper? Well, I got something. Well, listen to it for yourself. Now, this was recorded while I was standing outside of a McDonald's with my son, and this girl walks into the McDonald's and is inside the McDonald's, and I could not hear her. I did not realize this had picked up from outside McDonald's through the wall. I keep my recorder in my shirt pocket at all times. I was standing outside in silence, uh, we were looking at a water fountain. I did not hear it with my ears, but when I got home and played it back, I heard it. Also, in the beginning of this um, certain recording, these are uh, sounds that I picked up when I first started getting harassed, and they were what I was thought was coming from my phone. However, I found out later that they were not coming from my phone at all. They were coming from me. Everyone that is electronically harassed probably has a tinnitus in your ear. This tinnitus is not a normal tinnitus. And let me see. I'm going to try to find a, uh, a news article here that... Uh, talks about DNA changes. Uh, scientists found out that DNA can be changed by frequencies and language. Uh, let me see if I can find this right site. But it is in my opinion that we are being attacked to shorten our lives, to upset our lives, to isolate us, and it may even be part of the depopulation program. I don't know what their intent is, whether we're experimental, uh, lab rats, whatever you want to call it. However, if you do the research, you'll find out that they are using something called EPR, electropermagnetic resonance, permamagnetic resonance. And uh, let me see if I can find that site real quick. I will give you a definition. If you research that, you will find out they are targeting the free radicals in your body. Every ion or molecule within the human body has a pair of electrons. One has a positive 12 spin, one has a negative 12 spin. They cancel each other out. A free radical is a molecule in your body that has lost an electron. It makes havoc around your body trying to steal an electron from another molecule in your body. It is the cause of most of the brain diseases, dementia, Alzheimer, Lou Gehrig's, and Parkinson's. And they are finding out it is also the cause of cancer. Now, the best way to deal with free radicals, uh, by the way, what they're doing with these free radicals, their electrons have no spin. They are stable. So they pulse a microwave across you, 
and cause these molecules to flip pole or these electrons to flip poles. As they flip poles, they give off their information that is in the calcium, chlorine, and, and uh, chloride ions that pass through the synapses of the brain with their information. And as they flip the poles of these electrons, they give off their signature, which they then put in a supercomputer that tells everything you're thinking, seeing, hearing, doing. Uh, I have one video in my uh, file there that says, uh, if you go through them, you'll see it says, uh, I printed out, it says he has a cact, we put a cactus in his right shoulder. And I got question marks around cactus. Six months later, while sitting at my desk at BMW, I got a news email from EDN, Electronic Digest Network, which said, Cactus Semiconductor, the future of medical implants is here. And if you go to Cactus Semiconductor's website, you can Google that, and go to the news and look at about the sixth one. It says the future of medical implants is here. Look at this device. This device has a brain sensing circuit, a power circuit, a communication circuit, a neurostimulator, everything possible to monitor your bodily functions and stimulate your nervous system with false information it is wide open for abuse it was originally made to monitor sick people however it as I stated it's wide open for abuse now back to free radicals let me again see if I can find this page about EPR here we go uh, what is EPR? Okay, I'm gonna post this to the chat room. And if you look at it, you can also research other EPR sites using Google. You'll find out that, uh, I'm gonna click on it real fast. It says electron permamagnetic resonance, also electron spin resonance, is a physical phenomenon of absorption of electromagnetic radiation by a special type of molecule placed in a magnetic field. These special molecules are called paramagnetic because they have not an equal to zero total electron spin, therefore can be considered as small magnets. A typical example of paramagnetic molecules is a free radicals chemically active and therefore usually short-lived species. There you have it, free radicals. Now if you go down the page in the third diagram, you'll see a GIF video of a microwave source being shot across these free radicals and how they flip poles. And you'll see in the diagram under this uh, microwave source video, H1, H0, and H2, the external magnetic field as these uh, electrons split poles. It says the distance between these two levels will start to increase. Now the magnetic field is repeatedly scanned from the value H1 to a value H2. The distance between the energy levels is about E, uh, uh, some degree of energy, is increasing within the field, and at some point at a magnetic field of, let's see, H, little h is Planck's constant, I don't know what a big H is, uh, I'd have to look that up real quick, it says this, oh, they're just talking about this at this point, H0, this distance becomes equal to the energy of microwave radiation, HV, uh, B being, being frequency, and it is at the point that the transitions between these levels occur, or we can say that the electron spins flip, this is the resonance, the electron permamagnetic resonance. It occurs when the energy of microwave radiation equals to the distance between the levels and the opposite spin orientations. This condition is described 
by the resonance formula. That's Planck's constant times frequency. Well, you'll have to read it there on, on, on the, I don't have my physics papers up, but I'm in a group. There's five of, uh, four of us in a group on uh, Facebook, Dr. Robert Duncan, Peter Rosenholm, who is a well-known targeted individual, Kate, and Cynthia Hamill, who is a journalist out of San Diego. I met Dr. Robert Duncan through Cynthia Hamill. Uh, we had a physics lessons within our Facebook group where we came up with uh, searching for the microwave or the frequencies for these ions that, that uh, are in our body. What we came up with was they are using the galls of the earth, which in the United States is 0.5 galls. Now, galls is the electromagnetic field of the earth. It is the natural pole-to-pole -pole magnetic flux that surrounds the earth that protects us from some of the solar rays, some of the uh, incoming solar flares, etc. Around the United States, the magnetic flux or the galls of the field is around 0.5. Doing the research in the physics equations, we came up with a frequency of 1.46 megahertz traveling on the Earth's galls to cause these attacks on people and to interfere with brain thought frequencies. Now, if anybody has seen the documentary on Hulu called The Resonance, or called Resonance, Human uh, beings of resonance, or has seen the uh, video on YouTube called Who is Eliza Lamb, Energy Weapons Part 1, you'll find out that we are beings of frequency, that we have lost touch with the earth, and the earth puts out a gentle pulse, and we have lost touch with that pulse. It is a healing pulse. And if you Google earthing, which I started doing four or five years ago, I found out that by using a ground, I eliminated the static charges to my body. I eliminated a lot of the pain. I started making my own grounding or earthing devices and started wearing them to sleep. I have them plugged into my receptacle using my common earth ground rod that is located directly under my electric meter to my home wiring system. It is a earth ground. Now, what does this do for the human body? If you have free radicals looking for electrons, where is the best place to get electrons for molecules that have lost an electron and are looking for an electron. The Earth. The Earth is full of free electrons. Walking 10 minutes a day barefooted on the moist Earth in the early morning dew or late evening dew will help charge your body up. Or you can do like I do and sleep with uh, a charge on you all the time. Now I offer pictures from my upcoming book to anyone that would like them to make these devices or if you'd like I, I can make them for you at cost. I think I have a uh, four dollar markup and I'm asking for a donation. I'm not selling these items. All monies donated are going toward a fund for awareness and a campaign against government abuse. I talked a lot with Robert Duncan. I bought his, he, he advised me to buy his new book, Project Soul Catcher, which has a lot of information. If you've ever uh, viewed his book, The Matrix Deciphered, which used to be uh, all over the internet, you could just Google that. Um, pretty sure there's still free unedited copies of that. 
However, he does say that he is going to go back, edit that book, and put it out, publish it. It was never supposed to be published on the Internet. It was never supposed to be put on the Internet. If you read that book, it'll tell you how he wrote most of the programs. If you ever saw the Jesse Ventura conspiracy theory uh, show, Brain Invaders, the episode called Brain Invaders, you'll see that Robert Duncan is the last man in the show. He is the big kahuna, as Jesse Ventura called him, who was abused into writing the programs for all of the alphabet companies and most of the Department of Defense and Department of Justice programs for spying on people. When he found out that these programs were going to be abused against the American people, he quit his job and he became an activist. And if you see the video that I posted earlier within the chat, you will hear him say that he wants to expose all of these crimes. If you read his book, The Matrix Deciphered, you will see that he was even hit with the V2K. And he even makes jokes of it. He says, the voice says, I am God. He gives them a smart remark. And then he says, the voice says, would you believe I'm the devil? And he gives them a smart remark. And he just learns to ignore them. Now, this is a lot of what you have to put up with and a lot of what you should do, especially you people that are physically stalked. You need to start ignoring these things they want you to get upset about. This whole attack lives off of fear, uh, pheromones, and enzymes you release in your body to make more free radicals, to make you more susceptible to be a target. You have to watch what you input into your body, what you eat, what you drink, uh, because a lot of the foods, processed foods, have such chemicals as MSGs, other chemicals put in food that are bad for the human body, Corn syrup, for instance, take corn syrup. It is a cheap sweetener. Uh, the U.S. is has an abundance of corn. It's used in just about everything you eat, from condiments to breading on uh, fried foods. Just about everything you eat has corn in it. But corn syrup is harder to digest. It's a sweetener harder di to digest and it's bad for the kidneys and possibly the liver. It makes them work a little bit harder. You have to watch what you input into your body, reduce the free radicals in your body. You have to learn blocking techniques, interfering techniques. You have to learn safety for your home. If you have a home security system and it's electronic, it is no longer any good. If you watch the Jesse Ventura series called Who is Watching You, you will see that after 9-11, the United States went to the smallest corners of the cities and counties and made these little communities uh or every city and county has its own little group called InfraGuard. InfraGuard is made up of, of a joint task force of city and county law enforcement, businessmen, lawyers, and they invite small petty criminals to do their dirty work. Uh, they give favors. This also includes the FBI. They give favors to petty criminals to do their dirty work, and they uh, will break into your home. If you watch the episode, Jesse Ventura, Who is Watching You, you'll, he interviews an electronics technician that makes these little rocks. They can throw them in your yard and pick up every sound that comes out of your house from your 
touchpad to your security system. They have your security code. They have every number you dial on your telephone. And of course, you know good and well, all of our telephones are being monitored by the NSA. That's no big secret now. Uh, Edward Snowden broke, brought that out, but he did not tell the whole story. He tried to, in his last uh, remark to the media, he did try to say that they're using microwave weapons against everyone in the United States, but not a lot of the media's picked that up. Now, you might find it in the uh, Huffington Post or the Examiner, which come out of Britain, I think. Uh, Washington Post may have some good stuff. It surprised me when I went to Washington Post and uh, searched for mind control. But it appears that they have found a way to tap into the human soul. Uh, everything you think, hear, feel, see, and do. Uh, I am presently in the uh, taking action and opening my electronics lab back up where I hope to make an interference device that will work down into the 1 megahertz, 2 megahertz range, maybe possibly down into the low elf range until I can figure out a way to jam whatever frequency they are using. So far we came up with I think 1.46 megahertz. If you go to the site whitehouse.gov and look at initiatives, click on initiatives, then do a search for the brain initiative, you'll find out that this is an initiative to map every brain. It doesn't tell you that, but the brain initiative is an initiative or a study for brain mapping. In other words, once they map your brain, they can figure out how you think and possibly Fast forward this to determine whether you will be a criminal or not, or have criminal intentions. You will see on that site from whitehouse.gov, the Brain Initiative, where they have doled out millions of dollars to different universities around the United States, DARPA, and different private industries to learn to do this, but it doesn't say who they're going to use for these experiments. Well, you could know good and well from the past when the government wants to experiment on people, they don't ask for volunteers. Uh, for instance, during the first MK Ultra era in the United States, they did not ask for volunteers to take this LSD. No. They used it on each other. They put it in clubs. They spiked people's drinks with it, uh, did whatever they wanted to, to whoever they wanted to. It appears that the U.S. government thinks that they can do anything. If you go to a doctor's office with a real medical problem and you sign a release form, this doctor can take that release form and pass it up the, up the road to the universities studying these diseases, to anybody, and now you are a human guinea pig and don't even know it. So what is the, some of the, the things you can do to help yourself if you're a targeted individual? If you're an electronic targeted individual, you need to learn blocking techniques, interference techniques, magnetic therapy, we found out, me and Enrique and Michael Fitzhugh Bell, found out that if we bought large neodymium magnets, well, not large, mine was four inches by two inches by one inch thick, 490 pull, uh, pound pull force neodymium magnet. Now, you only want to buy one of these. Do not mess up and buy two of them. Two of those type magnets at 18 inches apart could slam together at such a force that it would break your bones. But we found out that if you use one of these and you put the North Pole toward your body, say you were getting one of the symptoms of a targeted individual is muscle spasms in the abdomen. 
if you would get these, you would lay the magnet on your abdomen for an hour or two, take you a nap, do this daily. Slowly, you will make these go away. If you get these sharp pains anywhere in your legs, in your arms, rest with the neodymium magnet there for a couple hours, take you a nap, or either go to sleep with it. I slept with mine on my head many times, or, or on my pillow, and I gradually learned that I was eliminating some of the harsh attacks. Uh, Enrique, uh, Enrique recently emailed me and said that he has done the therapy with it on his ear and reduced the tinnitus. Now, I haven't tried that yet because I can't go to sleep with it on my ear and I can't lay on it with my ear. Uh, I tried that one time and it kind of hurt my ear. Uh, you know, it's, it's like uh, wearing earphones to bed. <laughs> you wake up with sore ears or earbuds, uh, you can use uh, audio programs you can download for free off the internet. Hold on a minute, I'll pull. They're called Binaural Beats. That is B-I-N-A-U-R-A-L. You can Google that. You can download these. These are sound recordings with certain frequencies in them, like I have one that is a DNA stimulation repair. Now what you can do is you can loop these, put these on a uh, sound program, copy paste, copy paste, copy paste, make them as long as you want them. Say you want a four hour loop of this uh, program, or you can uh, loop them on your computer, say uh, continue playing, plug your earphones in, and go to sleep with these. I have one for sleep. There's one Schumann resonance, which is the resonance of man. Uh, if you watch the movie uh, Who is Elisa Lamb, Energy Weapons Part 1, you'll, you'll hear him say this. This frequency is not only the pulse of the earth. It is the alpha wave of the brain. It is the resonance the red blood cells in your body need. Through my earthing, in the past four years, I have not caught a cold. I have not been sick, not one day, from earthing. Treating myself, removing free radicals from my body, and boosting my immune system up high. Getting rid of the static, directed energy that was cast at me. It has done remarkable things to build up my immune system and my body's health. So you're not only protecting yourself when you ground yourself, you're also giving your body extra immune protection and health. It is very important. Contact with the earth. We wear rubber-soled shoes now. We used to sleep on the ground. We don't do that anymore. Our floors are insulated, isolated from the earth. We lost contact with the earth. Again, with these binaural beats, you can get nerve regeneration sound beats. Uh, I have one for nirvana, one for sleep, one for growth hormone release. Different frequencies affect the body in different ways. Lucid dreaming, GH sleep. I think that's the same as the growth hormone sleep. Energy now, if you want to pick me up, there's one for energy. Put these binaural beats on your iPod, your your iPhone, or your... your uh, whatever you have, and play them in your ears if you have the heavy tinnitus, and get back in touch with the earth. Uh, anyone that would like a copy or a pic the pictures, what I did was I took pictures of my book. I did screen captures and turned them into JPEG images. Um, some of the uh, devices I use for blocking and protection, anybody that would like these pictures, I will send them or message them to you in Facebook. You can reach me in Facebook under Dwight Mangum, M-A-N-G-U-M. Anybody that would like to request a friendship, send me one. And my terms for friendship request, just as Dr. Robert Duncan said, is you have to have a history. You have to have a picture of yourself normally. And you have to have mutual friends in the same position as we all are. Now, 
my suggestion for those that are physically harassed. You've got to realize it's much more than that. My question to you is, what is making you notice these things? I see people that say they are vehicular stalked. They have cameras in the windows watching cars go through the intersection. There's nothing you can actually do about it. What's making you watch? They're making you watch. People that think they are just physically being stalked by someone, you're being made to feel this way. You've got to start asking yourself, why do I care? Why don't I just ignore them? And I'm afraid to, to tell you this because your next step may be a promotion into the program. That if you do ignore it, you may be stepped up to the electronic side like I was. But you got to remember, again, this program works on fear, terror, releasing the enzymes in your body, and the production of free radicals that are being monitored with this electron paramagnetic resonance or electron spin resonance, however you want to say it. Do the research. Look this up. You can look online and do a search for neuroscience in Google and see how many universities there are presently working on neuroscience and that have grants from the government to study neuroscience. It just so happens to be that the Batman shooter from the theaters was a student in neuroscience. It also is a little funny that the boy at the Sandy Hook shootings, father, worked in the government, just like uh, this fellow Alexis that put on his weapon. This is my elf weapon. He was not responsible for the 12 deaths. Whoever is running this experiment on people is, in my opinion, in my opinion is responsible for the 12 deaths and him. There are also other false flag events that have happened since 9-11 to the Boston bombings. I'm pretty sure a bunch of you have seen uh, the pictures where they tried to say that the Boston bombing was partially false flag event. Uh, I have a whole row of pictures that shows actors with torn clothes but no blood. Uh, they claim that the fella now, wasn't it funny that they took the fella, the double amputee, in a wheelchair with main arteries blown out and all, in a wheelchair, and rolled him up the street? Wasn't that kind of weird? They didn't put him on a, uh, lay him down on, on, on a uh, gurney? Uh, wasn't it kind of weird that they rolled him up the street in a wheelchair? Well, I also saw on uh a video that this fellow was actually a double amputee from Iraq war that was being used. Now, I don't know if this is true or not. You can research it yourself. I did see videos of people splashing fake blood around at the Boston bombings. Now, I'm not going to say that there were some people injured, and I won't try to denounce or, or promote that it was all fake, but I did see some fake action going on, false action which would make me think of a false flag event. And it was just so funny that they were having a FEMA-type training two blocks away at the time of the Boston bombings. It was so convenient. So you people that are physically harassed, you've got to ask yourself what's making you attracted to all these weird events that are happening around you. I started, uh, I probably was first physically harassed and started ignoring them. And I therefore started getting the electronic harassment after I discovered by accidentally recording all my phone calls that there was something funny going on. In my opinion, I caught them. They knew I caught them. And so I was electronically attacked. Hey, um, uh, yeah, go ahead, Derek. Uh, Dwight, um, I think we're about ready. I think uh, okay. Um, you have, uh, I mean, you've given us a lot of really um, insightful information about um, uh, some tips for the community as far as how to deal with the electronic targeting, which is very important. And yeah. 
there'll probably be a lot of questions for you about this. Okay, I'm uh, the ready. The stalking is just the stalking, and um, you know we just pretty much ignore it, and uh, it doesn't necessarily go away, but it's just no, it doesn't, and it's do hard to do. ignore. It is hard to ignore. I'm sorry for you people. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I've I've had it. I mean, stalking for 30 years, and um, ignoring it doesn't make it go away. It's no, it part does. It's um, part of the psychological warfare. It is, and you've got um, to realize that it also affects you. At least in my case. I mean, some people say that they ignored it and it went away. Uh, um, in, in my case, that that does not happen. But um, it, everybody's uh, targeting is, is somewhat different. But anyway, That's true. Um, it's like Dr. Robert Duncan said, they're using at least seven different technologies against you. And, and through my credentials, I was able to go on some industrial sites and see some of these technologies. I had to sign comp, uh, agreements of confidentiality. However, they are using your power lines in your home and everything in your home electronic. Mm -hmm. I would advise you to do away with incandescent light bulbs. Try to get fluorescent light bulbs, but don't get the new ones coming out because the new ones coming out say contain mercury and have EPA warnings on them that if one breaks, you must leave your home and they have to do a cleanup. I think that is ridiculous. My energy company just sent me a whole case of these light bulbs. Every one of them have mercury in them. Wow. Well, okay. Well, Dwight, uh, well, I guess we'll go ahead and get started with the uh, with our callers, and we look forward to this evening and, and uh, hopefully get a lot of information uh, from the session. And yes, I, enjoy, I that, enjoyed uh, talking, Derek, and also uh, Dr. Robert Duncan has a new book coming out here in a few weeks called uh, How to Tame a Demon. Uh, my book's going to be a little bit later, and How to Tame a Demon is short antidotes on for new targeted individuals and what to expect. And he will have some practical antidotes in there on how, what to do, uh, how to protect yourself. So I just okay. wanted everybody to know that. Well, okay. Well, uh, we're about ready for a questioning from our callers. And hopefully uh, you've been listening and learning a lot from Dwight this past hour. So at this time, if you have some questions for him, feel free uh, to start eight on your phone so we can begin our discussion. Hey, Dwight. Hey. This is Peter. Can you hear me? Oh, hey, Peter. Uh, everybody, this is Peter Rosenholm. Hey, Peter. He is uh, very known within the targeting community. His father worked for Raytheon. Uh, Peter, good to hear from you. Yeah, I, I saw I saw your uh, your chat that you're going to be on tonight. Yeah, I so, stuck it in our YooHoo group. Uh, did Robert uh, see it? Do you know if Robert? Saw uh, it? I I don't know. I wanted to come on and say hi. You know. Yeah, thank you, uh, Peter. Uh, let me go back to our YooHoo session there, and yeah, I don't see anybody on there but Cynthia. Um, I haven't heard from Robert in a couple of days. Have you? Uh no. No, but he's got he's got a guest so Wait a minute, I heard from him on the eight eight, which was yesterday. What do you he think of it? Put, uh yeah. Peter, you uh you have been a targeted individual for how long? No, I don't know. Twenty to forty years. It's pretty long. Yeah. Pete, Peter has been a targeted individual for a pretty long time. He he was active or he's still active on McActivism, Yahoo group and other groups. Presently, he's active in our YooHoo group, which we have on uh, Facebook. We call it YooHoo. Again, it's uh, me and Peter and Kate and Cynthia and Robert. Uh, we were at one time doing physics lessons, and our teacher quit on us, didn't he, Peter? <laughs> no, you know, you know, we we got to do our own work, anyways, and uh, yeah. Now, you what know, was the uh, Frequency we came up with in the finality was at 1.46 megahertz. No, it's basically 1.4. But when you calculate when you calculate the Earth's magnetic field, there's vectors in x, y, z. But when you look when they prove EPR, they use the Zeeman, Zeeman effect, and they really yes. only use the z, the z component to prove it. So you know, so you get, so when you 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 can go on. What is it called? Uh, is it NOAA? And you can actually look up. The uh, 
gravitational field in your area. And it's based on where you are on the globe, your elevation. And this 1.4 will vary depending on your magnetic on the field. Galls. Yeah, the gauze of your right, area. Right, right. It's, it's in gauze, you know. Gauze now, the of... gauze is affected by elevation, latitude, and longitude, is it not? Well, it just it varies all over the earth. There there are right. strong magnetic fields and weak ones and but elevation is definitely another factor. I mean if you're in an area and you're in a higher elevation, it, it's a different uh magnetic field. And they're gonna fine tune this, uh you know, all over the internet are these, you know, superconducting uh tuners, amplifiers. You know, they they they're getting, you know, very delicate. The tune into yes, the human. Tell, tell us about squids. Well, squid is how they view EPR. You know, yes. I, I got that NASA report that was yes, that mentioned that 1.4. And squid stands for? Super conducting quant, uh, quantum, quantum interference device. Yeah. And yes. and in, in this NASA writing, they mentioned that. Uh, to enhance the signal, they use a, a coil that has to be Correct. near the surface of the target. Now, the bioethics is also talking about viewing neurons and animals and what they call in vivo, which means in life, you know? And, you know, mm-hmm. real like, like us, you know, without us knowing it, you know? They talk about their mating and everything else, you know, the animal's private life, and they say they're going to do humans in the future, but, of course, we know they're doing it. Uh, Right. Did you uh, get that copy of Eleanor White's last uh, pamphlet? uh, Didn't I send you a copy of that? I'm not sure. I I didn't see it. She posted it on McActivism. I'll put it in our YouHoo group, and if anybody uh, would like a copy, uh, it has to do with with, uh, weapons technology. Uh, let me find the book, and I'll tell you exactly the name of it. Uh, Eleanor White just pr- recently put it out. I think it's Random ra- random Collection, I think is what she calls it. Uh, uh, I, she, I was she, telling her, she, she said that Squid, you know, really didn't do anything that she could see. And and so I put up, you know, EPR detection with Squid. And, I think know, she did include that. Maybe it's, she did. Uh, maybe she added it. It is a PDF called OSEH-TEX, T-E-C-H-S. Yes, it has a Maser uh, weapon, and it has squids. She put superconducting quantum interference devices in there. Right, but she even says, included. She doesn't think it, it's a fact. Hey, All right, can, okay. I say, can I say one thing, Derek? You know, and then I'll get off. There's one thing in this NASA writing about squid detection of EPR, and it's about this coil that need, needs to be near the surface of the target. And when we find people like David Lawson or Steve Wilson who have implants, flesh type, coming out of them, they have a little coil in them. Uh, so do the RFID chips. So i just like to point that out, that, uh, you know, Eleanor was asking, well, you know, how do you d- decipher you know, targets from all the other life, you know, that's out there. And the NASA writing basically pointed that out. And so I'll I'll go with that. Okay, if there's a way to detect or to determine or to decipher that, then that's something we need to be aware of. That would be very important information. No, I think this is remote neural monitoring. Uh, on the bioethics, they also talked about... Uh, you know, seeing every neuron firing and not only seeing it, but being able to uh, affect it. So, I mean, the the last meeting, uh, I think it was meeting 19, there was a whole lot said in session six. Uh, DAPA was there, et cetera, you know, but they, they talked a great deal of, about this. You know, they talked about reagents being used. Uh, what would that be, nanoparticles? Uh, on our call the other day with Dr. Barry Trower, he mentioned being infected with a virus, and the virus would migrate to the brain, and then they could kill that virus, and then it would leave behind the circuitry needed, maybe coils, you know, minute coils that help EPR be picked up by squid. 
Yes, I also read a story about uh, pollutants in our air that were self-assembling nano-bio particles that would self-assemble once breathed in, soaked in by the skin, uh, however they deliver them. Yeah, okay, well, that is important because that is, you know, an air delivery method, and that's something that affects everybody. And, uh, and it's see, Magnus was talking recently that these uh, nanobots uh, have affected 80% of the population. I'm not sure how he how he knows that, but that's the number he quoted. So that's that's significant. Yes, it is. Okay, um, I've unmuted a few people. Um, if you have questions for Dwight, uh, feel free at this time. Uh, yes, yeah. Eric, yeah. can you hear me? Yes. yes, I can hear you. This is Connie Marshall in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, I get frequencies in my left ear that sound like computer transmission noises, not just regular frequencies. And I have uh, UAVs or some type of uh, moon or UAVs flying along this moon type thing, which I've posted on uh, YouTube. And it follows me everywhere I go. And it comes down very low on my house, and I get attacked by it all night long. I can feel it in my head. I can feel the pulses in my in my legs, my arms. I get attacked more if I'm in my bedroom. They attack my muscles in my arms. They attack my muscles in my legs. Uh, they have actually made my body almost come up off of the bed from my head down to my knees, which they've attacked every part of my body there. So I'm just yes, wondering. Yes, like electrostimulations, correct? Going around like electro uh, stimulations of the muscles. It's electrostimulation, but what I'm concerned about is this moon, this thing that looks like a moon. Sometimes it's a quarter moon, sometimes it's a full moon. And it's not a moon because it's very low on my house. It just looks like a moon. And along with it are UAVs flying along with it. There's other aircraft with it. This thing is stationary, but when I move, it moves with me. In other words, I can come out my front door, and I have posted this on YouTube. I have come out my front door, I've taken my video camera and filmed this thing over my chimney on my house as a focal point. And then I've crossed the street to the other side of the street, coming out of my front door, pointed the camera back at the chimney in my house. It's not there. It's over my head while I'm across the street. And then I walk back over to my house. Pointed at the chimney, it's back over across the street with me. It follows me everywhere I go, and I have yes, I would like I would like to see these. I have other people that have sent me videos of blue beans, uh, blue orbs, and uh, different type of things that they are photographing. However, you got to be aware that they are now using holograms to scare people. They're using uh. Holographic uh, simulations on people, and uh, these are mostly to scare you, uh, to uh, terrorize you. I can actually hear this thing moving over my house, and I get attacked by it. It's some type of aircraft that's over my house as well with this thing. They they do use the quad rotor drones. Uh, I have seen them. I uh, watched a University of uh, Arizona demonstration of how they can make them swarm now. Yes. In other words, uh, a dozen of them that's move. What I'm getting. Yeah, they they can track you and follow you. And they attack you as well. Right. You need to ground yourself. You need to have a grounding device. Most of this directed energy attack, I've learned, is static. It is uh, released and discharged at your body like a LASIK, a laser is discharged into the crystal to put art in these crystals. These are done with LASIKs. Now, how do you uh, stop these discharges within your, these static discharges within your body as you ground yourself? I heard you speak of that earlier. And, yes, uh, you're I mean... always grounded. You send the uh, directed energy to ground. It does not stop in your body. It goes straight to ground. And I can reach you on Facebook, correct? You can friend me on Facebook, and I will. Uh, wh- what is your first name? Connie. Last name Connie. Marshall. 
Yeah, yeah, go ahead and friend me, and I will invite you in, and I will send you some of my protection devices, some of my uh, screen captures from my book that's coming out soon, uh, Protection for the TI. I haven't quite named it yet. Uh, I thought of going along uh, Robert Duncan's uh, theory of how to tame a demon, but uh, at once I was going to call it the demon lives in my small town. <laughs> <laughs> how are you found on Facebook? What is your name, or do I go under Robert Duncan? Or how, how are no, you? No, go to Dwight D W I G H T Mangum M A N G U M. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Well, yeah, I... <clears throat> yes, go ahead. Sorry, I had a question. Um, I was just wondering if how how do you feel about the clothing that they have for protection? Like uh, there's a uh, oh, website for clothing that's supposed yes. to help you. Is that Believe me, I went through this. Let me talk about this briefly. I went to Less EMF. I bought the Silver Text underwear. Uh -huh. They are supposed to be cotton with a silver thread. They are very flimsy. It's about $140 for a top and the bottoms. Mm -hmm. I found out that you can just go to Walmart, buy you a pair of long johns that are one size smaller than you would normally wear. Make sure they're skin tight. Go to Lowe's, buy the 3M tape. I think it's 8831, metal repair tape. Whenever you feel a, a, a tingle, on your hip, your legs, your arms, put this tape. I've got uh, a picture on how to place this tape on your long johns. It's much cheaper than buying these very expensive, flimsy, silver text garments that won't last a month. They are uh, very flimsy. They are uh, not that protective. Okay. They did not block it out. I went and bought a pair of cheap long johns for $4, and a roll of this uh, aluminum repair tape cost about $8, and it's a five, I think a 50-foot or 500-foot roll. It'll last you a couple of months. Okay. And... Uh, you know, when you go to change your long johns, just stretch the uh, long johns a little bit, and it releases the tape, peel the tape off. If you have a hard time getting it off, just throw it in the bathtub of hot water, and it'll soften the glue. This glue on this tape also works excellent on the hands. I'm sitting here now with the piece of the tape from uh, my thumb diagonally across to my little finger. If you look on RFID chips, on Google and look at images, you'll see where they place these chips in the hand. And I have a picture also from my book that I'll send out to anybody that wants it uh, that shows how to place this tape on your hands. It's very, the adhesive on it is very gentle to the skin, doesn't bother the skin. Uh, if you want these blocking and interfering techniques, these pictures from my book, just uh, Facebook me, message me, I will send them to you. Okay, and just one quick question. What is an RFD, R, RFID, RFID transponder? Uh, RFID transponder. What is that? Yes, an RFID chip is uh, they were first made available, I think, through a company called Verichip. It is a chip that is the size of a grain of rice. It is glass encapsulated with a uh, a textured in that uh, they say your nerve endings will uh, attach to. Uh, it is a way of identifying a person. They can also put other electronics in it. Yeah, so do you got to have implants before you're a TI or no? Uh, I think they've advanced to the point of where now they can use EEG heterodyning radar, which is over the hill radar, and uh, Scalar interferometers, I'm not sure now. Uh, I know I'm implanted, but uh, I've read where it's advanced at such a fast pace that now they can view everybody using uh, possibly deep. 
DNA frequencies. There you go, because I can tell you what, they can hit you anywhere on your body at any time precisely, and I know this right. for, from, from experience, Correct. and they, they, they don't implant every square meter of your body, so it, it's correct. done remotely. It's all done remotely. Well, they, they they can use neurostimulators that would send out impulses to different parts of your body. If you go to uh, Rainbow Medical, Google Rainbow Medical, you'll find out it's a company out of Israel that does implants, and they'll show you diagrams of the inventor, Yossi Gross, who has made an implant for every part of your body that can attack along your spinal cord, your neural system, uh, any organ in your body. Uh, also, go to Cactus Semiconductor, like I said, and look under news. Look at the seventh, sixth or seventh article called the, uh, uh, medical, the Future of Medical Implants is Here. Scroll down the page, it'll show you a block diagram. Then scroll down the page, it'll show you a picture of the device and everything that it has in it, including brain sensing, a three-axis accelerometer, uh, a power supply system, a communication system, a neurostimulator, etc. A lot of these attacks are simply trickery of new medical devices that have been developed to help people that are being abused on others. And a lot of it's uh, new radar and frequency uh, transponding devices. Uh, now they have broadband over power lines. I, like I said, I was given the uh, authorization with my credentials to go on industrial sites that have developed some of these new de uh, developments, such as broadband over power lines. They can use your home wiring to attack you. That's why it's important for you to go outside every now and then. Get away from your home every now and then because uh, your home, inside your home wiring, your home wiring covers, encompasses your whole house. It's running overhead, underneath, receptacle to receptacle, light to light. They can use these in a form of uh, hijack uh, different frequencies on the 60 hertz. And I've actually read this with an oscilloscope and saw these hijack signals on the 60 hertz signals. Therefore, I use uh, conditioning devices such as isobars on my computer, which filter out other frequencies. And uh, most of my electronics devices in my office and bedroom are filtered out using isobar devices.